today we're on one of the windiest spot on our property. Are you curious about windbreaks and what do they do? So windbreaks can consist of a variety of trees, shrubs, and also those that provide food for wildlife. They can also be used to create a boundary or privacy screen for your property. There are many different types of windbreaks, but we can distinguish two main types. One is called shelter belt and the second one is called hedgerow. So hedgerow typically consists of dwarf um, trees and shrubs, could be fruit trees, could be nut trees, could be evergreen trees. They are meant to protect like a smaller area. And the shelter belt, it typically consists of line of taller trees. So for example, you have two lines of trees and in between those lines there is like a field so their role is to protect crops and livestock from harsh winds now about shape windbreaks like most conifers are triangular in shape so that means you would plant a line of taller trees and then you would have shrubs um, on either side. Windbreak should be at least 10 times as long as it is high. So a windbreak hedge that is four meters high should ideally be no less than 40 meters in length. Please also note that the length of windbreak needs to be greater than the length of the field protected as wind funnels around the end of windbreaks. When planning permaculture windbreaks, it is really important to consider the direction of the prevailing winds, the topography, the climate, and the soil. This will help you to decide which tree species uh, will suit your site best. I know it can be really difficult. That's why I've created a free guide helping you to choose the right wind-resistant trees and shrubs for your site and for your hardness zone. Click the link below to download it. So let me show you an example. So here we've planted a row of strawberry trees, which are dwarf um, sort of fruit trees. They reach height of up to five meters, which is perfect. And on the leeward side of the windbreak, we've planted mugo pine. We've already planted conifers on the north and eastern edges of our property. We will be adding more trees and shrubs on the leeward side to increase biodiversity. Here's another example of windbreak combo. It's Italian alder and service berry in front row. I believe you can see two cypress trees we've planted so far apart. Studies have shown that windbreaks can reduce the wind speeds by up to 75%. However, don't fall for that. Don't plant dense windbreak. Dense windbreaks may seem like a good idea, but they can actually do more harm than good. When wind hits a dense windbreak, it can create a turbulent eddy behind it, which can actually increase wind damage to nearby structures. So a more permeable windbreak of about 50% allows some wind to pass through, reduces the wind speed, as well as turbulence behind it. So this not only protects your property from wind damage, but it allows your garden to thrive as the wind can help to pollinate your garden and distribute seeds. You can notice over here how this tree has bent over time. This is a sign the really strong wind from north, this is the north, was hitting the hedgerow. And this is where the most persistent cold winds come from in winter. If you planted something already too densely and you start to notice negative effects don't you worry you can always prune your hedgerow and to allow a sort of more wind to pass through that's how we did it here thank you for watching subscribe for more landscape design insights